Welcome to Free Beer Friday, powered in part by Classic of Denton. Cool. Well, guys, welcome back to Free Beer Friday. How's it? Wait, where am I looking this today? That that one. Red that light. one. Red light. There we go. Sorry. Sorry to point at y'all. That's really rude. But I don't. Honestly, I don't care. Hey, Ben Easley, your host from the Bearded Monk, right there. Yeah. But my eyes are up here, and my guests are both here in studio and on the sound waves. I've got Dean over here from Alaskan, and Tyler Lindquist is on the horn right now. Tyler, you want to say hi to everybody? Hello, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> on, the, on the horn. There we go. <laughs> there we go. And it, So Tyler can't be here to, to drink out of mugs this fine morning show. I guarantee you he has his own yeah, libation. You, you got a beer there, right, Tyler? Rich Hop IPA. Oh, nice. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, again, he's got to come with something we can't get here. <laughs> oh, shit. Nice. <laughs> it happens, man. I already blew it. Already blew <laughs> it's all right. I'm You're sorry. all good. You're good. I'm sorry. Enjoy a really great beer. It doesn't matter, man. As long as we're all enjoying really good beer while we're talking about beer. This is perfect. Okay. So we want to talk about a little bit of the history of Alaskan. The Yeah. Yeah, okay, so when – you've been there for 20 years of the 30 years now? 30, yeah. Of the 30 years, exactly. Over half – yeah, definitely over half their existence. It's pretty awesome. Golly. All right, so what do you know about the, the beginning of this thing, of this big well, old behemoth I mean, monster? You know, <laughs> our, our, our brewmaster, uh, Jeff Larson, and, and his wife definitely, you know, were – they were home brewers back in the day, and, and it became popular. They decided to open a brewery in uh, 1986 in Juneau, Alaska, and it, it certainly morphed into you know, a, a, a nice brewery, and we were definitely just trying to share the goodness with the rest of the world, so to speak. Right on, man. Right on. Well, and you were the – what number brewery? 67. We were the 67th, 67th brewery. Tyler, how many breweries are there now in the U.S.? Seven, seven thousand. I can't even keep seven. count. You certainly are not going to count it on one hand. I yeah, mean, it's <laughs> yeah, it's every day. Yeah, oh. seven thousand something. Golly, isn't that crazy, guys? This is where we're at in the craft beer world now. This is absolutely crazy. Okay, so you've been there for twenty. Where did you get your start? Like, what? What was day one like? They were just like, "Hey, you're cool. Want to work here?" What, yeah, how? pretty much. It was it was you know <laughs> one of those moments where it come into the brewery. You know, moved to Juneau, Alaska. Didn't know anybody. I come to the brewery, pretty cool. And uh, the next thing you know, I ask too many questions, and they give me a, a, a you know, hey, you want to fill out a uh, you know your resume kind of a thing, and and the rest is history. Nice. You know, I mean, here it, it is wonderful. Dude, that's awesome. That is really awesome. And here you are. Here you are today, 20, 20 I'm still years here, man. It, it, it's wonderful. Man, that's awesome. And we know some of these beers that are coming out. Uh, there's some great stuff rolling out of that place. What, what does recipe formation look like? Like these new beers that we're seeing down here, um, how do they get started up there? Are these your brainchild children, brain children, or is this coming? Oh, yes. There's, you know, everybody asks, like, how many brewers do you have? And it's like 100. <laughs> but every, every, everybody asks uh, how who gets to develop the recipes, and it is somewhat of a team-oriented thing. You know, anybody can come as, a, as an opportunity to come and develop a recipe, and depending on how it gets received in the brewery, we'll brew a bigger batch to release to the public, and if it gets received even better, then we'll make it a bigger batch, and that's the majority of how our beers get made. I mean, it is somewhat of a, you know, team effort i think everybody here is a brewer and everybody has a, a say and what what's good and what's worthy you know right on well okay so you say yeah. everybody are we talking like your your brewing team gets a say in it or are we talking guys in accounting guy folks behind the bar anybody really anybody. very much yeah. very much everybody i mean the, the brewers awesome. definitely do a, the majority but, you know, accountants and, you know, human resources, like everybody in accounting, any, anybody has an opportunity with a passion for beer to come to the table and start developing a recipe. And 
honestly, that that That's is half awesome. the fun is to see what people come up with. That is so odd because you've you know, got folks from we, all we different are walks. We are passionate around. beer drinkers. I mean, everybody here drinks beer, so that's kind of one of the prerequisites right. of working at a brewery is like you, you should like beer, and uh, so everybody likes you know, to develop something that they want to drink. So right on. Kind of fun. Huh. So basically when you were talking about the accountants, yes, the accountant, uh, anybody Literally in the accountant department brew. can sign up with a brewer and uh, come to them with an idea. And then the brewer will figure out how to do it, actually. And then we have uh, several one-barrel systems, which is, for those of you that don't know, uh, a barrel is equal to two large-sized two kegs. kegs. Yeah, so um, so one-barrel system. So we'll, we'll make one of those and see how it turns out. It goes up into the break room and lets everybody at the brewery that, that uh, goes through the break room can, can judge it and score it. And oh, if it like if it uh, doesn't do well, we scrap it. If it does well, it goes out to the next the uh, the next test, which is Juno, and then the next test, which is Alaska, and then it we we it we just broaden it by there. Yeah, more national at that yep. point. Then we get to see it down here. Then that then, kind of thing. Yeah, when we when we know it's a uh, it's a winner, then we'll uh, we'll ship it out to everybody else. Right on. That is so awesome. That is so awesome. So it really is. You whatever your job is during the day, that night you're probably. Here at home, writing up recipes and then going back to work, and it, that's well, that's how my day would go anyway. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Tyler, how much time do you uh, do you have to spend in in uh, Q and A? Because we do have our own our our own quality control laboratory, and every every uh, beer that gets brewed goes through there. Yeah, pretty much. It's, we, there is definitely uh, you know that part of the job or like oh you get to drink beer at work is like well it's not like a social drinking at work but you do have to taste the beer at every process so after fermentation after filtration when it's packaged to make sure that it meets you know hey would you buy this you know yeah and 99.9 percent of the time it's we're, it's money and we're ready to go so uh, that is part of the program you know and it's funny because it's 10 30 in the morning when we do that <laughs> And, uh, Breakfast. So drinking. a lot of people are just like, "Oh man, I don't know. I just finished my coffee. I don't know." <laughs> no, it's, but you know, especially when we're brewing coffee beer, I'm like, "Oh, perfect! You know, I'm ready. I'm ready to go." That's a that's a breakfast beer. Yeah, that is there absolutely perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if. Well, I mean, even the Big Mountain. That's yep. super light. It I is. would I would have like a tea that morning and then drink this. You know, so I don't have coffee rolling across my tongue that morning. Tyler, how did Big Mountain come about? You know, it was one of those hop experiments where we were making a pale ale, and uh, we were, you know, trying some different varieties of hops, and basically it was kind of the Simcoe, Citra and uh, experiment, and that's that's where it came around. It was like, that is a great pale ale, and, that it you know, it took off. It just took off. So I had to give it a... A big name, Big Mountain, you know. <laughs> now, right on. It's delicious. One of my favorite beers right now. I, I mean, when I drink that beer, I think of the Simcoe hop. There are other hops in it, but that's that's my main character for that one is kind of a dank, you know. There's a little bit of citrus, a little bit of floral. So mm-hmm. it's definitely a wonderful beer. Definitely Dep- my after-work beer. You know. Right on. No, a different scent than I than I think of when I think of Simcoe. Yeah. yeah. This is dry hopped with Simcoe, right, Tyler? Yes, yes, yeah. dry hopping, yeah. Mm. I guess we should take a break, too, and mention we, everything we're drinking today is, is on draft right now at the Bearded Monk. So if you can't make it down here to try, what do we have? Uh, we've got Perseverance. Perseverance Ale, which is a Russian Imperial Stout with uh, a lot of homegrown Alaskan ingredients. Uh, we've got our smoked porter, which is... Uh, Oh, I think it's won a medal at just about every GABF that uh, has ever been done. Right on. And uh, it's uh, it's done in a true German uh, Rauch beer style. Uh, Tyler, what what uh, how how is that beer made? What are the what's the process that you we know, go through? It it's funny because the smoke porter is like the cult classic where we don't brew very much of that beer. But a lot of people know us for that beer. Right it's, it's definitely the one beer that you can age. Of course, a lot of people like to drink it. I don't. I don't drink until it's two years old. I, I've been here for so wow. long. I like it fresh now, and and uh, so, so I drink it fresh just because it is a little bit more, you know, 
um, sharp and smoky and, you know, like barbecue pit kind of character. Mm, and, uh, it is so good. So, and it is, it is delicious. Um, you know, a lot of people here, the locals definitely equate it to uh, the fish beer because it has a smoked alder character and a lot of people smoke fish with alder smoke. So that, that definitely really? goes par. Most of oh, the... and you know, and 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 I've always you say it's like I, I it goes great with a cigar and some fish. And, you know, yeah, it is. It is a definitely fire pit, uh, some snow. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, cold, cold days. Yeah, <laughs> it's great beer. But you I'm know what? You get that. it cold enough, and it's good on a hot day too. No, oh, yeah, no, it's been great. Uh, what it, what have we blown through like three kegs? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Starting in the middle of summer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's done just fine. Yeah. It's done just fine. Yeah, there's so much good flavor to that. Well, okay, so we were talking, I'm a little interested in this. We were talking about this break room tasting system. What else is going on at the brewery? So I've heard there's some there's some really forward-thinking stuff like that with this green initiative you guys have going on. What? How, when did you start that, and what does that look like? Are you talking about like our uh, like the the positive cycle the the uh, the uh, renewable energy uh, thing that we do there? Yes, 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 yes. I I guess I just I infer that it it sounds like it's it's a green initiative. I don't, I don't know what you guys call right, it, but right, yeah. yeah. Our our main goal with that is to to have a you know like a zero net uh, negative effect on the environment. So basically, all of our waste product we want to we want to reuse and reclaim our, our waste products and use those in some way that's beneficial to okay. the brewery. Okay. So uh, Tyler can probably uh, uh, talk about that a little bit more, our CO2 and, and uh, mash filter well, press and spent grain boiler. It, you know, <clears throat> it's funny. It starts with, uh, you know, Jeff, our, our brewmaster, Jeff Larson. He, you know, we live in this community, and it's somewhat landlocked, so uh, – so everything, you know, you want to think about what's disposable and what's not. So we're definitely keep that sustainable mindset, where it's like, you know, hey, when, during fermentation, we're producing CO2. Well, let's recapture that CO2 and right we on. use that in the process. And now we're, you know, we, we get the uh, just, the mash filter press where it's like, okay, well, now we're saving a million gallons of water every year. Like that helps and it helps dry our grain because we, we don't have any farmers here to get our grain. And then so when we dry that grain, we turn that into fuel and what we burn to make steam that powers the brew house. And <laughs> it's, it's kind of that self-fulfilling cycle of, of you know, we're not wasting anything that we produce. So that's that, amazing. That's kind of where that comes from. And, and that's definitely always been a part of our, you know, you know, the way we think of things. And uh, there's not a lot of waste. We try not to throw anything away. And that's, that's kind of it. We, we're keeping going. And as far as I know, now we're – Using our steam that we produce to make electricity in the future, <laughs> and be producing electricity for the brewery. Oh, that so, is awesome! This is all done. So, top yeah, of it, spit. it's amazing. Yeah, I'm really not qualified to speak on this, all of it. Because <laughs> I'm not, I'm not the engineer. I'm just a brewer. But uh, it is amazing the, the way things work here, and just because of we are so, you know, landlocked and, and limited ins and outs, that that's what we do. So yeah, yeah. It, it's pretty cool. So we're, this is you're in this environment where you don't have these easy resources that everyone has, and you're you're also in that mindset of you. No, I don't want to speak negatively and say that other people don't care about the environment, but uh, I I feel that Alaska is very much in tune with the environment it's in in this very fragile ecosystem. Is well, that being, fair to say? Yeah. Well, being where where we do well, brew, I mean, we are. We're, yeah, go We're ahead. surrounded by, yeah, you know, the beauty, you know, obviously. And so, obviously, anything we can do to not, you know, uh, waste it or tarnish it or anything like that. So, I, right I, I just think that, you know, we're, we're in track with, with trying to use everything that we can produce and, and you know, the CO2 and uh, making our own fuel to, to fuel our brew house. is like, that was a big deal. So That's pretty cool. That is pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, right. so... so you know, and for for those of you that are that are listening, the uh, th the way this is done is so after you brew beer, there's always you know the grain product that you're getting the sugar from that's in the boil. It, that's always it ends up on the bottom, and there's there's this uh, grain. It's almost like a mushy cereal, 
and uh, most most uh, breweries will sell that to farmers or give it to farmers as mm-hmm. cattle feed because it's a great cattle feed. Uh, but we only have like what one, two, maybe three cows in in the Juno area, so we we really we really can't. can't. I know a couple. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, we really can't sell it to the farmers or give it to the farmers. So we were drying it to get it down to the the lower 48, having to go through the expense of drying it so it wouldn't spoil on the way down. Because yeah. everything that comes out of our brewery comes down by barge uh, because Juno is it, completely locked in. It's not like you're going to drive it out. No, right? I mean, it's, it's <laughs> like you're, it's, it's an American import because we really are uh, bringing beer down from, from Alaska via barge. And uh, to the to the lower forty eight, it's almost like a, a European import just on the other side. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, no doubt. you guys are so far up there. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what spawned this this idea. Well, I think the, it was out of necessity, I, I, as far as the the grain goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But All that right. is so awesome because we do see a lot down here of these local brewers that uh, they partner up with the farmer. Well, sure. like today, I watched In County Brewing Company. I watched uh, the farmer back his truck up and uh, bring in empty uh, barrels and pick up full barrels of grain and throw it at the back of his truck. Yep, it's yeah. just another way of doing it. And uh, we, by by recycling that CO2, we don't, or making our own CO2, we don't mm-hmm. have to buy liquid CO2 and ship it up to Alaska, which we'd lose uh, 20% by evaporation by the time it got up there in the first place. So mm-hmm. we're losing money. It saves money, and we pass that on to the customer. So That's cool. Yeah. Well, and then think about all of the uh, the environmental costs. Exactly. So you don't have a barge bringing it up, or uh, vice versa, a barge taking grain down. Right. Yeah. We, we that's keep pretty awesome. Uh, we pre- that system prevents over a million pounds of CO two from being released into the atmosphere every year. That's awesome. Just by just by capturing it and in using house. it in the uh, the beer. That yeah. is so awesome. We also use the CO two to to purge our our bottles and. And everything before they, you know, nice. so CO2 on the bottling is, line. Yeah, so CO2 is is a, a, a huge uh, component, and uh, we we manufacture ours from the uh, the brewing of the beer. Beer powered beer, my man. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. Beer that powers beer. Beer powered beer. Yeah, I like beer this. Beer powered beer. I like beer this. Beer powered brewers, too. <laughs> hey, right on. Aren't we all, like, isn't this whole industry beer powered? I think so. Let's, yeah, at least the, the staffing side of it is. <laughs> there it is. Um, it's a passion, no doubt. So I wonder, with just a little bit of time left, what are we looking at in the future of Alaska? I'm looking at well, both of y'all. I here. mean, it's, it's <laughs> interesting because nobody really knows. Everybody, obviously, we have we have a lot of ideas running around. It's like we're, we're currently, you know, we got this barrel program we've been working on for a few years. And, of course, we would love to share it with the rest of the you know, our, our distribution network, but Fair right enough. now locally, we, we're, we're, we're doing some barrel programs and, uh, you know, trying to infuse some of the local ingredients and we're coming up with some great recipes with that. And we'll, you know, depending on how awesome our recipes get, uh, we'll definitely, you know, be ready to, to ship that out. You know, um, we're just, we're looking, we're always looking for the next great recipe. Yeah. That sounds tasty. The It's, it's, uh, we're, we're, we're just getting into it now. So um, one thing about our brewers is they are very picky about the beer that they are going to release to everybody it's, else. It's why we see the quality we've seen over the last 30 Absolutely. years. Absolutely. Yeah. And not everything that gets brewed up there gets released to the public mm-hmm. because these guys are, are very, very picky about what they, uh, what they do. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely fair. So if everybody out there in Radioland – if you want to try some of the stuff that Tyler's talking about, just uh, well, hop on Alaskan Cruise. Actually, what yeah, you can do, hang out. <laughs> if you want to find our beer, just go to alaskanbeer.com and look at our brew finder. You can punch in your zip code, and it'll give you every uh, restaurant and uh, off-sale uh, place that, that has our beer and has purchased it in the last 90 days. So nice. you can find it that way. Nice. Well, um, you know, I guess we're talking about that. Where... We're doing the party tonight. Yep. So we've got um, the Alaskan White, <clears throat> the Perseverance, the Smoke Porter, and the Pale on draft tonight. That's right. At the Bearded Monk. There it is. Look us up on. I just saw myself in the feedback monitors. That looked awkward. 
There we go. That's less awkward. That's yes. Um, <laughs> uh, so you can find it there tonight. Um, where else in Denton? Like who? Who normally carries you? Who's got you on? Well, we have. Uh, oh, what do you have going on? So you, we have a lot one. of a lot of the uh, the regular venues here in in Denton that uh, that have our beer. It's 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 hard to pick who's got it right this second because mm. it, there's so much rotating. <laughs> yeah, we all change over yeah, so darn and, quickly. And just because yeah. uh, a place has it in the in their uh, beer cooler doesn't necessarily mean that it's out and and ready to go. So uh, the best thing to do is to, like I said, go to alaskanbeer.com, go on the beer finder, put in your zip code. Um, you can go, go down to five miles, two mile radius, however you want to do. And uh, and you can find it that way. There it is. And uh, call the right call it if they don't have it, ask for it. Hey, we'll, fair enough. We'll uh, we'll get it to them. Hey, we can get it. We can get pretty readily available in this town, right? We've got beer, Tyler. Oh, yeah. We've got some beer up there, don't we? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. We've got some beer. <laughs> we can ship it. Please, nice. please come to Juno in the summertime. That's right. I, forget that, man. I want to come in, come up and get snowed in. What's uh, what's oh, policy? Oh yeah, come on up and do that. That's, <laughs> I mean, of course, that's when we're going to be drinking perseverance. You know, I was like, well, I like this. You know, we'll, we'll hook you up, no doubt. I uh, yeah. What's what's the policy if a Texan comes in crying and cold, and uh, has nowhere to live? Can can we just <laughs> live in the brewery? Would that be cool? Hey, we're all humanitarians up here. We will definitely take care of you. And we we got you covered. Yes. I mean, no all right. I got a plan. If I can just make it up there, I'm just going to bum off of you guys. I'll subsist on no beer for the winter. No worries. <laughs> let me know when you're headed. I'll, I'll let them know when to be ready for you. Give them a little warning on yeah. the way up. Be like, oh, Look God, up. this guy's going to totally take over a booth for the next six months. There's this guy with a beard, <laughs> with a beard and, a sh- and a shotgun hat on. <laughs> oh, man. Tyler, thank you so much. This is awesome. Thank you. It's an honor. No, cheers, man. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers, cheers. I know that your time is very precious, and for you to to give us these moments is pretty awesome. This is pretty awesome. And, Dina, thank you, man. It's, it's an this honor. Awesome. Happy Friday, you guys. Everybody, cheers. And, and uh, Cheers, you know, cheers. Ask for an Alaskan. I'll you drink know? for that. Right I'll, or I'll drink to that or for that. Heck, yeah, dude. All right. Well, w- Tyler, enjoy the, uh, enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the evening. Oh, well. Hey, no, it's not evening over there yet. It's, it's just late afternoon there. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're working on it. Enjoy but the will. rest Thank of you your much. day, <laughs> your day of work. <laughs> All right, man. And then everybody, thank you for joining us again for Free Beer Friday. Come party with us after party back at the Bearded Monk, uh, and then we'll be back out next Friday for another show and another night of drinking. <laughs> Have a great one. We'll see you later. Thanks, all. Well, thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the show. Be sure to check out DentonRadio.com for new Denton artists and where they're playing next. While you're surfing the Internet, make sure you check out our friends Classic of Denton at ClassicofDenton.com.